Testosterone is a hormone in the body. Hormones are usually secreted by endocrine glands that we have in our body. Females also have a certain degree of testosterone levels. Usually males have around seven to eight times the amount of testosterone that women have. So the natural production and secretion of testosterone decreases over time. And at this point, you can have symptoms that affect your quality of life. So that's where we have the decrease in sexual libido, decrease in erectile function, um, decrease in mood as well. We have decrease in muscle mass or bone mass. When we talk about nonspecific symptoms, that, that's where we talk about the generalized fatigue, um, not feeling very well, uh, mild unspecified anemia, things that may point to an issue with low testosterone but are not indicative completely of low testosterone levels. The testing for low testosterone or hypogonadism, which is what's called, is fairly straightforward. So essentially we measure your testosterone levels and this is done usually in the morning around 8 a.m. Uh, while you're fasting because we know that eating can decrease those testosterone levels. And so we do this once and we see what your levels are. If they come back normal, that's reassuring, but we can repeat it again. If they come back low two times, that's where we do further workup. And the actual treatments for those are also relatively straightforward and we have a good number of different options to choose from. Then we have to determine why you have low testosterone. Is it usually a problem with the testicles not producing enough testosterone? Or is it a problem with your pituitary gland not sending the signal to produce testosterone? And so then after we find that, we have to identify, is this a reversible cause or an irreversible cause? Here in the United States, the most common cause of, or reversible cause of low testosterone is obesity. So obesity causes what we call central hypogonadism. So your pituitary gland is not sending the signals for your testicles to produce testosterone. And so when we, when we identify reversible causes, our goal is to be able to reverse that. If we find that you have an irreversible cause, whether it be a functional or a structural problem, then at that point, testosterone is indicated. And so testosterone most commonly is given through intramuscular injections. And so these are done every two weeks. Other options are the gel, fairly popular uh, for people who don't want to give themselves injections. Um, you have also some pills. So these are not used as commonly the pills. And there's also surgical procedures like implanting, implementing or placing pellets in some fat tissue of your body so that those can slowly um, secrete testosterone. As endocrinologists, we usually prefer injections or the gel because, well, for two reasons. One is the most comfortable that we are with, and then two, we can assess your response to those, to those interventions by measuring your testosterone levels because we know how they are going to act and we know when they're going to peak, when they're going to go down, and we can titrate the dose accordingly. You can definitely talk to your, your GP or your primary care physician because they would probably do the initial testing. And by the initial testing, I'm referring to what we spoke at the beginning of identifying that you have low testosterone and then identifying is it a problem with your testes not producing or your pituitary gland not producing those hormones. At that point, they are more than welcome to continue the workup or I would probably recommend at that point sending to an endocrinologist to then figure out why you have low testosterone and how we can intervene to either improve it or identify the cause of it.